there seems to be a fascination with regular sized people about little sized people. Step this way, the strangest sights on the earth. There's, there, there is legends and folklore um, about, you know, sort of small folk, you know, across the world. And it kind of got to a big focus in this country with the filming of, of The Wizard of Oz. What are munchkins? The little people who live in this land, it's munchkin land. And you are their national heroine, my dear. They got together, you know, the, for the movie, they got together 60 or 70 um, circus performers. Todd Browning, uh, right after he filmed Dracula, um, decided that he would, you know, sort of plumb the depths of the circus sideshow. And it was his undoing, unfortunately. It was the last film that he did because people were actually appalled uh, that he would uh, focus a, a camera lens on people that were, in the words of the movie title, freaks. I think people are generally afraid of other, people who are other to them. And um, if you look at uh, legends of uh, dwarfs in, uh, in you know, the grim fairy tales, for example, they tend to be evil uh, because they are different. And uh, there, is, there is something about folklore that tends to focus on uh, being suspicious of people who are other than you are. Please, Frida, don't tell me what I do. When I want a cigar, I smoke a cigar. The first time I heard about any Midgetville was uh, in the book Weird New Jersey and um, it was, they insisted that there were you know, little folk living there and they would get really aggressive if you drove around there at night. So everyone of course drove around there at night and uh, they said yeah, people, they would throw rocks at you and so forth. And I told some people locally, you know, so there's this place in New Jersey and they told me, yeah, it's not just in New Jersey, there's one around here too. We're kind of known as a historic town. That's how we were settled. Well, Ridley Park started in 1871. The Ridley Park Land Association was formed. We were part of Ridley Township before that. And a lot of the towns around here, I think, were part of township, and then they were divided up. And probably they were mainly farmlands and so forth. As you go along the train station and where the train comes in through Ridley Park, you'll notice there are a lot of large Victorian homes along there. At the outside of the home looks like what it was when it was first built maybe 100 years ago. Norman P. Sloan was from England. He was a cotton broker. He moved here around 1900 and he wanted to make an investment so he created this small area called Stony Brook. And what he, what he wanted to do, he wanted he built houses that he wanted to rent. He wanted to start a small arts and crafts village. And he wanted to make it look very nice. Now being from England, what he decided to do was make the houses very English looking with the low doorways and things like that. And he, re he rented the houses for about 20 years. But when I was a you know, when I was in my late teens, you could walk back there along the trail that you see on the map. And it was a nice little trail that you could walk all the way around. Now, they still called it Stony Brook. I never heard anybody when I was in high school, I graduated in 69, call the area Midgetville. Midgetville. When I was started, when I was like seven, eight years old, every Christmas Eve, the whole family would meet at my grandmother's house. And every Christmas Eve, out of, after a couple beers, my uncle would say, "Get in the car, we're going to Midgetville." And he would take me and four or five of my cousins, and we'd ride up there. And on the ride there, he would tell us about what's going to happen when we get there. Um, some people have said that. It's actually, like, they just have really tiny houses with little doors. Um, some people said it doesn't look like that at, at all. Some people have said, like, they've gone there and people have thrown rocks at them to get out and leave. Yeah, so some people say it's pretty, like, intense. But it's spooky and scary at night. It's, yeah. dark, it's a dark street. It's no outlet, so you have to, like, go down, 
go all the way down and turn around and come back up. When I was a kid, my sister took us right on the other side of Chester Pike over there, and we went driving around. The houses were tiny, but I, apparently all the tiny people had moved out. And every year we look forward to it, and I still tell my nieces and nephews and neighbors, anybody I come across about it. Ridley Park is the kind of place that fosters stories like this. For a story to take hold, it's helpful if there's three or four generations of the same family living in the same place. An example, when I first ran for mayor 19 years ago, and I'm knocking on doors, and at that point in time, I was in Ridley Park for about 30, 35 years, and I would say I'm an old time resident, and this guy would look at me and say, you've only been here 30 years? I've been here 70 or 60 or that kind of thing. Yeah, everybody kind of knows about it. Everyone's got some relative that's done it. I think even when I was in Sharon Hill, we heard about it and uh, you would hear about the midgets. I've walked the area where they're supposed to be. And you can't even probably find the area because how would you know? Some part of the continuity of the culture of this particular town, it's part of the identity of the town that these stories continue. So I thought one time of writing about Midgetville just because it is an urban legend and a lure and people are always asking and it's kind of connected to our town. So I wrote an article, it was really a snowy day and we were actually working from home because we were all snowed in. And I wrote it and we post online before we put it out in print and I posted it online and I came back about maybe 40 minutes later, an hour later and there was tens of thousands of hits. That fast, it kind of went viral. Something set it off. And I'm gonna say the late 80s, I couldn't, get, but I was a really township policeman then, and people that lived there were going crazy because people were coming up, they were walking around, they were looking in the windows. It got crazy for a while. You know how kids get all rowdy and teenagers when they come in bunches. I was one of those teenagers, so I know you could get rowdy. There is some truth that there was, in fact, one of the munchkins that did live in this area at one point. He was the, he was the coroner. He was the one that declared the Wicked Witch really most sincerely dead. He, uh, he was kind of a bit of a huckster. Yeah, he'd try and make a bit of money here, a bit of money there. The only thing I can think of, and it's really stretching my imagination and time, is once upon a time there used to be carnivals in Leeperville, I believe it was. And uh, maybe some midgets roamed around someplace down there, and maybe that's the origin of it. But I mean, people live right in that area, and they don't know about the midgets. They haven't seen any. We don't have any midget houses. Well, I wouldn't want to live on the street where people were coming down all the time. We moved in uh, in April three years ago, so it would be 2013. I mean, everybody knows about the legend of Midgetville. Um, our sons, who are all in their 20s now, all three sets of friends, one time or another, ended up here only to be disappointed. It's a rite of passage if you're a, a teenager in Delaware County, especially in this area of Delaware County. How often? <laughs> It can happen at any time. More often than not, Fridays through Sundays. At night, we'll all find groups of adults down here who had one or two, maybe five more drinks than they should have, who have decided that they're gonna find the cast from The Wizard of Oz down here, and uh, only to, to be disappointed, so. I think it's cool. I, I, I'm. I mean, we love living here. It's a, it's a wonderful neighborhood. It's quiet. The people are all great. It's all, uh, all family and we're older people who have lived here most of their lives. Um, and uh, I don't think anybody is uh, put off on the fact that there's a, a legend tied to these couple little blocks of 
you know, Ridley Township. I, I think more often than not, people, when people say, oh, you live in Mitchellville, you say, yeah, yeah, I do. More or less anything that is out of the ordinary is, you know, is the, is, is, will, make, will make a place stand out, uh, even if it's a story that's been debunked. Um, I think it's really important that people feel that the place that they come from has got something special to it. It's a, it's a happy legend. You know, it's not something people are not ashamed of or afraid of. Everybody knows about Midgetville. Everybody, they drugged their kids here, or they've drugged their kids back from here, or you know, I walked through here when I had too many beers, or just I took a walk back there in the fall because the, the, the trees were fall, the leaves were falling from the trees, and the houses were decorated for Halloween, and it kind of gave me a little feel of what I should have, what I felt 50 years ago when I was a kid waiting for Halloween to show up. So, if anything else, it's a, it's a really good thing. I will put an end to it by educating people now, because people love things like that. They love mysteries, they love anything that is silly or like just something that'll never be solved or you know how many urban legends there are people just like it it's just one of those things that you know sometimes it's like people see ghosts and nobody else sees them the reason that people still talk about it now is because um, whether it's an untrue story or not it's a great story don't let the facts get in the way of a good bit of folklore